I want to show you some amazing things about the genealogies of the Lord Jesus Christ that you read about, like in Matthew and in Luke and John. Starting with the book of Matthew, you're going to see that Jesus Christ's name is the seventh word in the opening of the book. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the seventh word. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing to me because seven is the number of perfection, the number of completion. Jesus Christ is so much connected with that number seven. Just like the Antichrist is connected with the number 13, the number six, Jesus is connected with that number seven. And Matthew shows you the lineage of Jesus Christ on the side of his adoptive father, Joseph. And Joseph's line goes all the way back to King David and Abraham. And the fact that it goes back to David and Abraham shows you straight out of the gate, the emphasis of Matthew is on Jesus Christ, the king of the Jews. David is king and Abraham, technically the first Jew. The genealogy of Jesus Christ reminds us of some things that I, would want, I want to point out to you. And the first one is, the Lord will acknowledge you as family. I don't care who you are, what you've done, what you did in the past, what you did before you were saved, what you did after you were saved. The Lord is going to acknowledge you as family because if you're born again, you've been born into the family of God and you are family. Just like he's acknowledging his lineage here in Matthew 1, he's going to acknowledge you. Look at the names he's included in the genealogy. I want you to notice that this genealogy in Matthew includes four very significant women. One of them is Tamar. In Matthew 1, you'll see the name Tamar. And this woman, back in the book of Genesis, she acted as a harlot with her father-in-law, Judah, she had met, you see, she had married one of Judah's sons. That son died. So she married another one of his sons, and that son died. And when she saw that Judah wasn't going to give her another one of his sons, I mean, maybe he's thinking by this point, this woman's like the black widow or something, killing off all her husbands. But she tricked him. She tricked him to keep the family line going. She wanted to keep that Judah's family line going so bad that she tricked him. She disguised herself as a harlot, and she knew Judah was uh, in rough enough shape that he would be going after her, and turns out he does go after her, and she ends up with child by Judah. And you know what? That puts her in the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the line of the tribe of Judah. It says in Matthew 1, 2, And Abraham beget Isaac, and Isaac beget Jacob, and Jacob beget Judas and his brethren, and Judas beget Pharaz and Zerah of Tamar. You see that? Tamar, that woman that acted as a harlot and tricked Judah, ends up in the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. The story is in Genesis 38. 14 through 16, it says, And she put her widow's garments off from her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and set in an open place, which is by the way to Timnath. For she saw that Sheila was grown and she was not given unto him to wife. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What wilt thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? So this act put her in the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about that. A woman who acted as a harlot, Jesus acknowledged her as family. Matthew, Matthew chapter 1. Another woman is Rahab. Now, Rahab was a harlot in Jericho, and two of Israel's spies came to her house, and when the men of Jericho come looking for them two men, she lies and says that they're not there, and God blesses her for it. She marries an Israelite and gets in the line of Christ, and her son, uh, one of her sons, a very famous character, is Boaz. 
It says in Matthew 1, 5, And Salmon begat Boaz, Booz of Rahab, Booz is Boaz, and Booz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king. So, you got Rahab in the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. Another one, Ruth. Ruth was a Gentile, a Moabite. And the Moabites, I don't know if you knew this, but the Moabites, they come from an incest relationship between Lot and his oldest daughter when she got him drunk one night. And uh, Ruth ends up being a virtuous woman she marries Boaz, Rahab's son, and begets Jesse, who begets David the king. You see that? Matthew 1, 3, and Judas. All right, Matthew 1, 5, and Salmon begat Booz of Rahab, and Booz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king. Now, Bathsheba. Bathsheba is involved in an, in an adulterous relationship with David, which ended in the murder of her husband Uriah. So that David could cover up her pregnancy, he kills Uriah. And she ends up in the line of the Lord Jesus Christ, and she is King Solomon's mother. And she's the mother of the wisest man who ever lived. Bathsheba. Look at all these, several of these uh, women that were involved in sex scandals are in the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you got Tamar that acted as a harlot. You got Rahab who was a harlot. You got Ruth, a Moabite, who ends up being David's grandmother. And you got Bathsheba who David committed adultery with. Now look at some of the men in Jesus Christ's line. You got Solomon, the king and preacher, as Ecclesiastes would call him. Ecclesiastes calls him a preacher. And you know what? He's got 700 wives, 300 concubines. And he went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians. He built high places and his wives turned away his heart. What a person to have in your family line. Then you got Rehoboam, Solomon's son, that caused the kingdom to split. You got Manasseh, the most wicked king Judah ever had, and he made his son pass through the fire, which is child sacrifice. He observed times. He used enchantments. He dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Now, he repented and got, got right with the Lord at the end, but what a life and what characters you have in the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that just the gen, Looking at the genealogy of Jesus Christ shouldn't be just a bunch of names. It should remind you God's going to acknowledge you in his family no matter what you've done because you are his family. Another thing that the genealogy showed me or the lack of genealogy shows me is in Mark it doesn't have a genealogy because in Mark Jesus Christ is portrayed as a servant the book of Mark portrays Jesus Christ as a servant so it doesn't have a genealogy in it because a poor and lowly servant usually wouldn't possess ancestry records so it doesn't even get into his genealogy Another thing about the genealogy is it shows me that the Lord Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. And you'll notice it plainly stays in line with the virgin birth because it doesn't say that Joseph beget Jesus. In Matthew 1, 16, it says, And Jacob beget Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Notice it doesn't say, And Jacob beget Joseph, and Joseph beget Jesus. It says, And Jacob beget Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus. It stays right in line with that virgin birth. Luke 3.23, it says, And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age 
being as was supposed the son of Joseph. You see, the the people who denied who Jesus Christ was or were just ignorant, they supposed that Joseph was his father. Notice it stays right in line with it. And in uh, John 8, 39 through 41, that's why those self-righteous people, were, they, they look at Jesus and say, we be not born of fornication. They were saying that Jesus was born of, of, of after fornication between Joseph and Mary. And Luke, let me show you something else. Luke 3, 36 through 38, giving you the genealogy of Jesus. And here in, in Luke, it goes all the way back to Adam. It goes all the way back. It shows you all the way back to Adam. And this is from Mary's side. But look what it says in verse 36, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Sim, which is Shem, which was the son of Noe, N-O-E, which is Noah, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Maalalil, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Now, there's something interesting I found about these uh, names that I heard several people mention. I thought it was pretty cool. You line up the names from Adam to Noah, which is showing you the line of Christ all the way back to Adam. It spells, uh, it's, it gives you a whole sentence. Adam means man. Seth means appointed. Enosh means mortal. Canaan means sorrow. Mahalalil means the blessed God. Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching. Methuselah means his death shall bring. Lamech means the despairing. Noah means rest or comfort. You put those together, you get something like this. Man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching that his death shall bring the despairing rest. You see, that's an amazing thing. A prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ within the names of Adam to Noah. That's an amazing thing. You see, these genealogies, it's not just a bunch of names. They mean something. And you get over to John. He's showing you the line of Christ and just and just has God and just shows you that he's God. He doesn't mention any other names, just God, because John is looking at Jesus Christ as the Son of God, which is God in the flesh. So since John focuses on Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the genealogy starts with God. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of, that, of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. You get down to verse 14, it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He, the genealogies show you Jesus Christ is God, shows you He's born of a virgin, shows you though He was rich, for your sakes He became poor, became a servant. Jesus Christ took on the shame of, of everyone in his ancestry. The line that leads up to Jesus Christ is filled with people who failed every day. The line that leads from Jesus Christ is filled with people who did some wild, horrible things. All, and all the names, all the battles, all the tragedy, all, every horrible thing that happened, it all led to God saving you. It's not just a bunch of names.